of old, but it's still never easy to walk into and walk off with a victory at Three Rivers Stadium. It's always nice to come in here and get a win. I mean, I don't know how many times I've been in this stadium and went home on the bus, you know, losers. Pittsburgh still has old ladies riding the bus and lots of fans waving towels. Those special teams coach L. Roberts might have changed some allegiances by giving these Steeler fans a football. Out on the field, the Bengals struck quickly. Third play from scrimmage, Jeff Blake off the play fake, laid out a perfect pass to the streaking Darnay Scott, who ran away from double coverage. 7-0, Bengals. As Jeff Blake indicated, that's one. Rodney Heath got the start at corner, and when Cordell Stewart got flushed out of the pocket and threw wildly, there was Heath to catch the ball. Last week, he would have dropped it. I couldn't sleep until today. I couldn't sleep, you know. I mean, I worked, worked a little bit during the week, you know. That was just lack of concentration. As a Steelers fan borrowed a Bengal bag, the offense didn't squander the chance Rodney provided. Another play action leaves Carl Pickens open. That's a big gainer. Then Blake to Scott again, angling for the corner. He was knocked out at the five-yard line. From there, Blake took it in, using every inch of football field running right, the Bengals led 14-0 and 14-3 after a quarter. It was early in the second quarter, the Bengals flashed a bit of character. They were stung by this interception by Carlos Emmons. He returned the ball to midfield. But two plays later, Stewart missed his target, Brian Simmons tipped the ball, and Rodney Heath was already going in the opposite direction. The West High product was leading the race down the sidelines. I read the receiver going out to the flat. You know, that's usually my man to pick him up. Um, Brian Simmons tipped the ball up and it was just hanging there. And I was like, let me snatch this out there, you know, make up for what I didn't do last week. And as soon as I got it, I was like, nobody's going to catch me. I'm going to go take it to the house. Rodney got a hero's welcome over on the sidelines as the Bengals went ahead 21-3. to Well, the Pittsburgh faithful got real ugly and quite unfaithful. We want peace! We want peace! We want peace! They were calling for third-string quarterback Pete Gonzalez. They got second stringer Mike Tomzak instead. They cheered nevertheless. At first, it didn't change anything. Takeo Spikes spun around Richard Huntley. He fumbled the ball, and Spikes was able to gather it up. Then the Bengals were able to run the ball on consecutive carries. Corey Dillon found sizable holes in the right side. Two carries picked up a total of 32 yards. We really set the run up with the pass in the early, you know, with the play action going over the top. We was given a lot of opportunities. Um, the offensive line did a great job, man. There was there was holes there, and me and Mike, we um, we just capitalized on them and, and did the best we can. The drive finished with a Doug Pelfrey 29-yard field goal, and the Bengals were ahead of the Steelers 24-3. If you thought it would be a route, you'd be wrong. The Steelers grabbed a field goal, and then Tom Zack had them on the move again late in the first half. This time, they didn't settle for three. Tom Zach, 15 yards to Bobby Shaw. The Bengals' lead was 11 at halftime, but it appeared the momentum had shifted. Here we go, Steelers! Here we go! Here we go, Steelers! The Steelers didn't go away in the third quarter. They covered a third of the field on this pass to tight end Mark Bruner. And then with the middle wide open, Tom Zach found Heinz Ward open. Ward then found room to run into the end zone the Bengals' lead was cut to only four points. We knew it was going to be a dog fight. We knew Pittsburgh were going to give up, and we weren't going to give up. This is when the Bengals had to steady themselves again. Here was a key play, third and nine, and Jeff Blake improvised for 11 yards and a first down. Then they changed up nicely. Michael Basnight hitting the hole quickly and picking up 35 yards all the way down to the Steelers' 16-yard line. The Bengals didn't get a touchdown, but another Pelfrey field goal gave them a seven-point lead and any points were welcome. We were struggling on offense and, you know, trying to make, just trying to, you know, scratch out any kind of first down. The Steelers, meanwhile, could get first downs, but not points. Midway through the third quarter, they kicked a field goal, but got caught holding, they had to punt instead. Late in the third quarter, Tom Zach was moving the Steelers again. A sizable gain came on this pass to Mark Bruner. But then came fourth and fourth, the Bengals 33. Tom Zach didn't have a chance. Here come John Copeland and Michael Bankston, dropping him for a loss that was... Crucial. Crucial. Very... I mean, you think about it. I mean, I turn the ball over to the offense, and it's like a turnover. Early in the fourth period, Jerome Bettis isn't getting anywhere on a third down and short. But the Steelers try again on fourth down. This time, Bankston teams up with Lawrence Wright for the stop, 
the ball comes up a foot short. I already knew they were short, you know, because then when I when had banks and had grabbed them, and I just came in to, to push them back some more, and, uh, and then I tried to strip the ball at the same time, so the referee gave us the spot. All drama could have been avoided at the six-minute mark with a Bengal field goal, but this time from 23 yards away, Doug Pelfrey goes left. Mad at myself. Um, just tried to overkick it into a win. That was it was a pretty tough win, but still, I'm, you know, made just about every kick in warm-ups and you know, just you know, just disgusted. The defense needed to keep doing it, and they did. Operating inside their own 20, Tom Zach is chased down by Kimo von Olhofen. And then on third down, trying to go after the first down, Copeland, Bankston, and Gibson descend on Tom Zach. The last few weeks we've been getting get better as a defensive unit and uh, we have the confidence now that we needed early in the season. We know we can play good football. You know, and, and the confidence level with, with these games that we play like this, it just get bigger and bigger. But it still came down to the final two minutes when Tom Zach again was moving the Steelers. They moved inside the 30, but on fourth down, the pass went to Bobby Shaw, who lost it when he was popped by Rodney Heat. I knew it was going to come down to me because they kept going to the guy. <clears throat> Once uh, he threw it a little higher, you know, he gave me a chance to get my hand in there and you know, break the ball out. That sent the Pittsburgh fans home unhappy. That sealed the Bengals' second victory of the season. This one had plenty of positives. Uh, offensively, I think this is probably the most complete game that we, we played. You know, we, I think we had almost 300 passing and, and, and over 200 rushing. I mean, you can't get no balance in that. It, it feels extremely good. We haven't been in, in the winter circle for a long time. And, and today to come out and play a high caliber team like the Pittsburgh Steelers and, and beat them on their home, home field, man, I'm speechless. It, it's a good feeling. This is what Bill's on for next week. And then next week, Bill on for next week. And then you take one week at a time, one quarter at a time, and one year at a time, and then we can just continue to work and try and grow together.